Hey everyone, what's good and welcome back. This Friday's familiar album is going to be the 1996 album by Aphex Twin, Richard D. James. I'm a huge fan of Aphex Twin and consider him to be one of the best producers out there. And I'm probably not alone in thinking that. If you were to ask most people heavily into music who they believe the most seminal electronic producer of all time is, they'd probably say Aphex Twin. I'm quite familiar with all of his projects, except for this one for the most part. Now, I know this segment is called Friday's Familiar Album, but I have heard this album all the way through, several times actually, but not recently, so I don't remember how many of the songs actually go. So if I'm going to start talking about Aphex Twin on this channel, I decided to work my way up, starting from the one I'm least familiar with, then ending on the ones I'm most familiar with and enjoy the most. So with that out of the way, let's just get into it. The song kicks off with a super glitchy and stuttering DNB drum beat as these luscious angelic strings hang in the background. This charming synth melody then begins to build until it cuts out along with the original string section making way for a completely new string section and synth line, both of which are hitting much higher notes and sound as if they float above the catchy drum beat. I love the contrast created between the abrasive drums and other ethereal instrumentation. The synth line and strings then lower in tone as the strings become much more layered and pretty than previously on the intro. The synth line also achieves a new melody that is so captivating to me personally. I love when the drums cut out and have the synth line and strings front and center fully displaying just how gorgeous the combination really is. The drums then return until they cut out once more and it appears the synth line and strings repeat the pattern once more as the drums seem to get even more technical than before. The song ends on one final somber string section and hyperactive drum beat as it fades out. Overall, the song is really pretty and catchy. I love all aspects of it, especially the strings. This one is a 9 out of 10 to me personally. This really twisted sounding synth line, beeping arp, and sporadic breakbeat start the song, which I find to be a compelling combination. This combination continues until the synth line eventually cuts out, leaving the arpeggio and drums on their own, which sound well produced to me. There honestly isn't much to say about this song. What I said right there basically describes its entire 2 minute runtime. Overall, there is not much variation at all in the song. I can recognize it's produced well, but at the same time, what is here doesn't really go above and beyond by Aphex Twin standards, so it just leaves the song sounding pretty forgettable to me personally. I don't hate it, but I'm probably not coming back to this one. This one is a 5 out of 10 to me. I do like how the previous song flows into this one with that staticky effect. I think that's a cool detail. The actual song begins when these dark creepy synth stabs arrive with another glitchy and catchy drum beat. The drums really go crazy variation wise, as it seems they are ever changing. This very pretty angelic pad then comes in as this arpeggio beeps on in the background. The drums continue to go insane as the pad and arpeggio cut out before returning once again. I like the outro as well, as everything becomes low passed and then suddenly drops in tempo. That's a cool artistic decision to me personally. Overall, it's just an okay song to me personally though. Not horrible and definitely better than the previous song, but I'm once again probably not coming back to this one often. This one is a 6.5 out of 10 to me. This charming synth line sounding like it's pulled from a Pokemon game, paired with this cute, upbeat drum pattern start the song off on a pretty animated note. The shimmering synth line then makes an appearance over top of the original synth line and drum beat, which makes the entire song sound even more lovely, which I enjoy. Then an arpeggio comes in as all these different synthetic sounds bounce off of each other, creating a dreamlike feeling for the song. The drums then cut out as these gorgeous strings and metallic hi-hats come in. I love that arp that slides in and out of the song going through different frequencies. It's a really charming aspect of the song that I like. All these different forms of instrumentation come and go as the song goes on until it eventually ends with that arp I love so much paired with the various synths all on their own. Overall, this is just such a pleasant and bright song to listen to honestly. Not much else to add other than that. I enjoy it a good bit. This one is a 9 out of 10 to me personally. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.
This charming little organ melody, paired with abrasive, glitchy DNB drums, kicked the song off to a feeling that other songs previously had. This dainty yet compelling horn section then appears before this despondent, hollow sounding effect comes in, leading to the horns and organ to cut out completely. Only the drums and airy effect stay, along with this thick bass line and luscious swirling arp. A somber, uncanny synth line then appears that makes way for the shimmering pad before the arp and drums begin to glitch into oblivion and create a really surprisingly pretty and compelling sound. This lovely pad and synth line then come in as the drums bug out completely, ultimately ending the song on a chaotic note. Overall, the song contrasts itself a lot with the cute intro, only to lead into a cold passage and end on a bright note, all propped up by these incredibly hectic drums. It all comes together to create an enjoyable song for me personally. This one is an 8.5 out of 10 to me. This persistent, somewhat unsettling, disembodied vocal line appears of a child repeating my feet, my arms, and my ears, and your beat, paired with the synth line, begin the song. Hyperactive drums then come in, eventually making way for this very graceful pad and glistening synth line. The drums then cut out as the rest of the arrangement sounds gorgeous, until they come back in sounding as violent and sporadic as ever as they glitch all over the place and remain the only piece of instrumentation in the song which I enjoy a lot. The child's vocals, pad, and synth line then make a welcome return as this arrangement leads us into the outro where only the drums aren't present, which sounds just as pleasing to me as when it was only the drums present. Overall, I like the song a good bit and find it to be a very ethereal addition to the already dreamlike track listing so far. This one is another 8.5 out of 10 to me personally. These gorgeous strings serve as the background for these string plucks that sound like the rip from a children's movie from the 40s or 50s or something. The strings then vary themselves a bit as they hit higher notes and the pattern becomes a bit more broken up as this thick synthetic bass line appears. This retro sounding synth line appears which adds to the lively animated mood created so far in the song. Overall, it's a pretty song capturing some sense of childlike wonder which I believe Aphex One was going for but it just doesn't personally hit for me. It's not bad, but I personally just don't get much out of it. This one is a 6 out of 10 to me. I love that somber driving synth paired with this equally driving clicking effect as these speedy sporadic drum hits come in and out, going so fast they almost resemble a bird's call. The drums then fully come in, glitching out as another equally somber synth line appears. I love how metallic these snares sound as they bounce all over the place creating a hectic feel. The drums then cut out as the original synth line and clicking effect are front and center sounding as gloomy and cool as ever, until the drums appear once again sounding as frenzied as ever. I also really like the spacey sounding outro on this one as it once again is just the original synth and clicking sound. Overall, it's a pretty straightforward song that has most of its variation lying in drums but I'm not going to go through every change the drums go through because that would take way too long. Just believe me when I say they are hectic and the rest of the instrumentation is really moody and forlorn. I like this one a good bit. This one is an 8 out of 10 to me personally. This flute and delayed strum string pattern begin the song until these drum and bass breaks come in and add a good energy to the song to me personally. These pretty bells then come in, which adds to this whimsical feeling created by the song so far. Much like Goon Goompas, the song also has the feeling of an old children's movie from the mid 1900s. This beeping synth line then appears, which is a stark contrast from the previous instrumentation. The drums then cut out as these gorgeous flowing strings brighten and widen the song until the drums then return along with those bells from earlier until the song ultimately ends. Overall, I compared the song to Goon Goompas earlier and I believe that comparison still stands. Much like that song, I personally don't get much out of this song and possibly even less. It's by no means a bad song, but it just doesn't hit for me personally. This one is a 5.5 out of 10 to me. This is 
such a goofy song, honestly, with all these cartoonish effects. This organ builds up after the intro as these plucky, I believe, reverb synth stabs appear in the background. Those cartoonish effects then relax a bit as it is mostly just the organ for a section, but those cartoony sounds then unfortunately make the return. Overall, man, yeah, not much to the song. And what is here, if I'm being honest, I hate. The song is just way too fucking goofy for me to enjoy even a little bit. This is probably my least favorite Aphex Twin song I've heard thus far. It's genuinely a 1 out of 10 to me unfortunately, not one to play around the hose. Richard D. James by Aphex Twin is 10 tracks and just under 33 minutes long, which I believe is a good length for an album, but even being that short, I believe he could have just cut some songs out and made this an EP. The sequencing of this album could be arranged in any sort of way, but I do like 4 as an opener as it sets up this glitchy yet pretty atmosphere that is going to be found on the songs to come. But I hate Logan Rockwich as a closer and just as a song entirely, honestly. The overall theme and atmosphere as I mentioned before was really glitchy yet pretty, which I believe is where Aphex Twin shines the most. Of course he shined brighter on some songs more than others, but for the most part, I believe the execution was pretty well done for this album. Overall, for album length, track sequencing, and overall atmosphere, I believe a 7 out of 10 is appropriate for everything surrounding the actual music on this album. So if you add that 7 out of 10 along with all the ratings I gave the songs on this album, you get a 6.7 out of 10 overall, which I believe is fair. This album is just really hit or miss for me personally. When it hits, the songs are absolutely amazing, but when they miss, they're just forgettable and in one instance, downright unenjoyable on any front. My favorites had to be 4, Fingerbib, Karn Marth, and Takira Weakling Child. My least favorites had to be Logan Rockwitch and Cornish Acid, but especially Logan Rockwitch. I decided to begin going through Aphex Twin's catalog on this channel by listening to an album I've heard many times but seem to have forgotten, and I believe I can now see why it was pretty forgotten to me. Don't get me wrong, there definitely are highlights as I've mentioned, but I believe as I go through the rest of Aphex Twin's albums, this one is gonna rank closer to the bottom if not the very bottom. But while a 6.7 isn't the best rating, it's certainly not the worst. And I believe that being Aphex Twin's worst rating is still better than many artists' best. That is a testament to the quality to be found in Aphex Twin's discography. So I can't wait to get into more of his albums in the future. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see y'all next time.